Oh, hi. I didn't see you come in. Welcome to the Copper Plating Lab. In this lab, you're going to build on the knowledge that you learned from the Chemical Reaction Lab. Now, in this lab, you're going to be looking at copper plating and trying to decide whether it's a chemical process or a physical process. If copper plating is a physical process, you'll be able to put copper plating on just about anything, just like putting a coat of paint on an object. But if it's a chemical process, it's only going to work on certain substances. That's the question you're going to answer today. For this lab, you'll need the following materials. A deli-sized plastic container with lid, white vinegar, a graduated cylinder, table salt, a tablespoon, a wooden or plastic spoon, 50 pennies, two plastic cups, masking tape, a permanent marker, clay, six test tubes, two pipettes, two galvanized zinc nails, two iron nails, and two strips of aluminum foil. You have some advanced preparation for this experiment. Be sure to have some table salt and white vinegar on hand, as well as 50 pennies, so you can do the experiment. The main question in this lab is to determine whether copper plating is a physical process or a chemical process. To do this lab, you're going to have to do some setup three hours ahead of time. You're going to create a weak acid. First, fill the deli-sized container with 200 milliliters of white vinegar. Then add two tablespoons of table salt. Stir with a clean spoon. Now put in 50 pennies. Put the lid on the container and allow it to sit for three hours before continuing so that there are copper ions in the solution. Remember, keep all containers and test tubes out of reach of small children or pets. Notify everyone in the home that you are conducting an experiment and tell them not to touch any containers or test tubes. Step 1. Create a data table with the following columns. Metal, copper solution, and vinegar solution. Control. You can get the data table from your lab report document. Step 2. Use masking tape to label two cups, copper solution and vinegar solution. That's your control. Use some clay to attach the cups to your work surface to keep them steady. Then place three test tubes in each cup. In the copper solution cup, use a pipette to add the weak acid to three test tubes, filling each a thir about a third of the way full. There's one. Place the galvanized zinc nail in the first tube, an iron nail in the second tube, and a narrow strip of aluminum foil in the third tube. Allow part of each object to stick out of the weak acid so that you can observe changes to the part of each object in the weak acid. In the vinegar solution, control cup, use a pipette to fill each of the three test tubes about one-third of the way up with your vinegar or control solution.
place a galvanized zinc nail, an iron nail, and a strip of aluminum foil in each tube. Once again, allow a part of each object to stick up out of the vinegar so you can observe changes to the part that is in the vinegar solution. Allow the filled test tubes in the copper solution cup and the vinegar solution control cup to stand for one hour. Then check the nails and foil for signs of copper plating and record your observations. Copper plating would leave a dull finish on each surface. If you do not see any changes in one hour, allow the filled test tubes to stand overnight. When you have finished the experiment, clean the pipettes and allow them to air dry. Now it's time to report your findings. Did the copper attach to the objects? Based on your observations, do you think the process is a chemical or physical reaction? Compare the items that were in the copper solution to the objects that were in the vinegar solution or the control. Compare your results with your original hypothesis.